Welcome back to the 6th Gear Garage. If you're new to the channel, let me introduce my 1985 Toyota Extra Cab. Today, I'm going to replace the rear differential pinion oil seal. Every once in a while, I'd have a little drip of gear oil right here after driving. During driving, the wind will actually blow the drip back so you can see the underside of the third member is also wet with gear oil. Those are signs of a leaking pinion oil seal. I bought a new one from Toyota. This seal is used on a lot of different Yodas. I'll put the part number as well as all the tools I use today down in the description. Before I take anything apart, I want to be sure the drive shaft is marked in line with the flange. The drive shaft is balanced from the factory this way and reinstalling it 90 or 180 degrees off can cause vibrations. I had this marked from a previous video where I changed the center carrier bearing, but let's put a fresh mark on there. If you look over here, you can see one of those factory weights on the drive shaft. Now I'm removing the four drive shaft bolts. On this four wheel drive pickup, the bolts are 14 millimeter. It's stuck on the flange, so I'll give it some taps with a mallet. There we go. Now just angle the drive shaft off to the side and out of the way. All right, now I have a full view of the companion flange and the shiny nut that holds it on. It's staked to prevent it from coming loose, so I'll need to punch that out with a small punch or a little chisel. Now I need to block the wheels and set the parking brake. I'm also going to put it in four wheel drive and lock the front hubs. That's to help prevent the truck from rolling. Or you can just have someone stand on the brake pedal for this next step. Get a 30 millimeter socket to remove the nut. Now when I turn this counterclockwise, it's going to make the truck roll backwards. So keeping the truck from rolling is the only way to get this loose by hand. Unless you have a good impact. Mine is on its last leg. There we go. Important note, count the number of turns it takes to remove the nut. Some trucks, including this one, use a crush sleeve on the pinion. Some older models use a solid spacer. Rather than take apart the entire third member to replace the crush sleeve and adjust the preload and retorque everything to 253 foot-pounds, Counting the turns will let me get the nut back to where it was, and then I'll just torque it back to 90 foot-pounds. And that'll leave the crush sleeve and preload as it was, saving a lot of time and labor. I've read about this method on numerous forums over the years, and it keeps me from tearing apart the entire rear diff. If you want the full instructions for replacing the crush sleeve, I'll put a link to the factory surface manual in the description. Notice there's a washer behind the nut. Don't forget to put that guy back on later. You're going to need a puller to get the companion flange out. I'm sure they make a special one for this job and I don't have it. But I have this old steering wheel puller. That will do. Here's the back side of the companion flange. Pretty gross. I'll clean this up later. There's the leaking oil seal, also covered in grime. Looking at it from the side, you can see it's almost flush with the housing. It's really close, probably sticking out about one millimeter. So I'll be sure to take note of that when I'm driving in the new seal, stop just before it's flush. Be sure the new seal is the same as the old one because it's not too late to reassemble and go get the right one. We're about to cross the point of uh, no turning back when I pull out this old seal. I'm using a big flathead screwdriver for this. I have a couple of seal pullers, but none of them fit here. So if you're using a flathead, just be sure not to press on the splines of the pinion with the side of the screwdriver. Starting to get some movement. I'm uh, mangling this seal with the screwdriver. You can see why there's no turning back now. 
You know, if I was rich, I'd buy all the toy to special service tools they talk about in the service manual just to see how much easier they make these jobs. Come on. There it is. But when you're on a budget, a craftsman flathead will have to do. That's the oil slinger right there. I don't need to mess with that though. I'm just going to wipe the inside of the housing down here and uh, that will give me a clean surface to install the new oil seal. Sometimes I put these in the freezer to slightly contract the seal and help it go in easier. But it's winter in Ohio and uh, my garage isn't heated so no point in doing that today. I wiped some grease around the edge first to help it slide in. If you have a four wheel drive toy to pick up, you should already have one of these 54 millimeter sockets for the front axle nut. Turns out it's just the right diameter to drive in the oil seal. I'm using a rubber mallet, not a hammer. Making sure to hit the socket square on so the seal goes in evenly. Right side is out a little farther, so uh, I'll work on that side some more. Remember, I want this to be about one millimeter away from flush, so I have a ways to go yet. I'm getting closer now. Almost there. Only a couple millimeter to go. All right, that's perfect. I should have put a little grease or oil on the inside of the seal before I installed it. Now there's not enough room to get my finger in there. So I'm using this little tip on this pressurized grease can to squirt some on the edge of the seal. That way it's not dry rubber on the companion flange. And here is the companion flange, now cleaned up thanks to some rags and brake cleaner. I'll put a little bit of grease on the outside of it too. Uh, where it meets the oil seal. Get it lined up and press it on. I'm just going to give it a few taps with the mallet and socket to get it started here. Okay, now I have the washer and nut. Now, here's where I have to pay attention. Earlier, when I removed the nut, it was about eight and a half turns to take it off. So I'm going to hand tighten it with the socket so I can count the turns. Three, four, five, six, seven, and that's almost eight. This hole in the socket is a good way to count the number of turns. I have my old torque wrench here and we're going to do 90 foot pounds. That's enough to tighten the nut and not crush the sleeve any farther. I read the sleeve doesn't start to crush until like 130 foot pounds. As I mentioned earlier, you can follow the manual and tear apart the whole diff, replace the crush sleeve, check the preload, torque to 253 foot pounds, my torque wrench only does 150, and retorque. I'll put a link to the whole process in the description if you're interested in that. Now I'm turning the pinion clockwise, so I need to chalk the wheels from the other direction because it's going to want to roll forward. So here I'm going from hand tight to 90 foot pounds. I'd say that's another half turn and then some. All right, it's getting pretty tight. And you can see the pinion is turning with the wrench a little. And this is where it would be ideal to have someone stand on the brakes. I see the edge of the nut that was staked and it's almost at the notch in the pinion. There's 90 foot pounds. And there is the old stake lining back up with the notch. Perfect. By the way, you're supposed to replace these nuts once they've been staked. I mean, I usually use them a couple of times if the edge doesn't get too beat up from staking it. Now, I'm just gonna restake the nut at the notch. Being sure that my marks lined up, I reinstalled the drive shaft with the four 14 millimeter nuts and bolts. If your marks or your holes don't line up, 
and just put the truck in two-wheel drive and roll it forward or backwards. And those drive shaft bolts get torqued down to 54 foot-pounds. Now, let's check the fluid. If you had a leaking oil seal, it's a good time to top off the gear oil. The fill plug is 24 millimeters and the fluid should be filled right to the bottom of the fill plug opening. It's hard to tell with this light, but it's a tad low. I have some 75W90 to top it off. You probably can't tell, but that's the level it should be filled to. Any more fluid and it would start to run out of the fill hole. Well, that's it for this job. Do me a favor and give this a thumbs up if you found it helpful. That really helps the channel grow. Consider subscribing for more how-to videos and project vehicle updates here at the 6th Gear Garage. Thanks for watching today's video all the way to the end. I have a 6th Gear Garage sticker ready to mail to the first person who correctly guesses the tire size on my truck. Good luck.